Hello and welcome on News Now, Belmont Journal Daily News Show and Community Update. I'm your host, Frederic Rigolo. And today we, are, we have with us Joanna Tsouvelis, the multimedia journalist of the Belmont Citizen Herald and Wicked Local Belmont. <laughs> Hi, Joanna, how are you doing? Excellent, Frederic, thank you. So um, today, first story is a uh, hot, so how do you say that? Hot of the press? When? Yes, hot off the press. Right before we got on our Zoom, I got word from Will Brownsberger, our Senate, state senator, that Governor Baker has signed a bill to extend the remote open meeting law. And this means remote meetings for public bodies such as select board, zoning board, planning board, and all the multiple meetings, uh, town related meetings that Belmont has will be extended to April 1st, 2022. So they don't necessarily have to meet in person. They can still continue remote meetings. Um, I will just say this hasn't officially been announced yet, but it, but I do have confirmation from Senator Will Brownsberger that it was signed. So I don't know if it's taking so long to announce it. In the meantime, the select board are planning to meet in person on June 21st, as well as the zoning board. But um, it's possible that for their next meetings, you know, over the summer, they'll, they'll go back to remote. Yes, and maybe they will. Do, do you think that they will get some hybrid model? So meeting in yes, person? Yes, I do. Re remote I do. Yeah. yeah, I think the town just needs the technology, but they're working on it. And I know Belmont Media Center is helping a lot with it. So uh, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, and, and part of that same bill, two, uh, three other things was town meeting can be held remotely until December 15, uh, right. 2021. And, and two other news that I think uh, viewers will be happy to share is first <laughs> one fun is outdoor dining and to-go cocktail are still <laughs> available until right. April. And, right. the, and the second one that is more important is that the eviction protection is also um, up until April 2022. That's right. So yes, there's a it's a bill that has multiple multiple provisions. So all that all that will be coming out. But I just wanted to let you know about the the remote meetings. Yeah, uh, and I think that yeah, and that's important because that will uh, um, turn meeting. So to move to the next story, turn meeting last night was on June 14, and it was very important for the town uh, moderator to have it done that night because he didn't know at that time that he could continue remotely. Right. That's right. So luckily, it did wrap up, Frederic, uh, at around 11:15 p.m. It would have went on longer, but one of the motions uh, didn't pass. But uh, I think the big the big news is that the budget for the town and schools for the fiscal year 2022. Passed. There was a lot of discussion about each of the budgets and some of the different pieces in the budget. I know that a lot of people are concerned that the town is spending a lot of its free cash, seven seven point eleven million dollars, but they don't have a choice because the override didn't pass. And um, the school budget, as everybody knows, was reduced by 2 million, uh, about 2 million 70. A lot of the new positions that they wanted uh, are not being hired. And then some of the existing positions are being cut or like the athletic director, Jim Davis, who retired is not going to be replaced with a full-time athletic director, but just a part-time. And um, the community service coordinator position will not be filled. Uh, that woman retired, which I'll be talking about later. Yeah. Um, you know, they made cuts for extracurriculars, but um, they were like the least popular of the extracurriculars. And, um, you know, tax materials, supplies, and, and all that, uh, it all added, it all adds up in the end. But uh, I think the a big chunk of it was those new positions. It was like 8.6 full-time employees that they wanted to add, which was about 700,000. Um, so they saved that by not hiring those people. And then some of the and, interesting and, Yes, and the budget don't don't uh, count the federal funds that are they are. I, yeah, I think that's important to note too. Um, you know, there's there's funds that we will be getting. We don't know how much, but they just they they did this budget not including that. Uh, those so that might save some position or um, or allow some hiring. In possible, the although although these funds you know have restrictions on how they can be used. So they're 
trying to figure that out too. But maybe all that will be coming out in the summer as everybody's going to continue working in the summer. <laughs> There's no rest. <laughs> and the, the, one of the big story of the night, but we wasn't one at the end, was about the motion, the motion to reconsider the fuel tank. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so as previously reported, um, the fuel tanks were not going to get funded because there were amendments that um, eliminated the funding to get the project off the ground. Those, those, those passed at the, the town meeting previous to this one. But what happened is overnight, town meeting member Michael McNamara, uh, he must not have slept very good that night because <laughs> uh, the next morning he, he was like, I don't think I can, I don't think I am comfortable with how he voted. He actually voted in favor of the amendments which eliminated that funding. Um, but he changed his mind because he said, he, his argument was that there was a lot of confusion he felt and there were a lot of still remaining questions. And what happened was there was like 16 people waiting in line to ask more questions. And then someone made a motion to end questioning and that passed. So that was that was that. So he felt there was a lot of confusion and they needed more time to discuss it, especially, you know, some more time to talk to the town consultants, Weston and, and Sampson. And town moderator Mike Widmer, you know, he made it clear um, at this last night of town meeting that this motion from McNamara should not be taken lightly. You know, any motion to reconsider should not be taken lightly. It's not an opportunity for the losing side to reopen debate because they're disappointed by the original vote and want to reverse the outcome. So McNamara's argument was, no, it's, it's not that. It's just that we're, we were just confused and he feels like they needed, they needed more time to, be, to debate. But in the end, what happened was, as you know, uh, his motion was defeated, uh, 127 against and 108 for, and he needed a two thirds vote in favor for it to pass. So he didn't get that. Well, also worth noting the warrant committee, you know how different committees weigh in on some of these motions and the warrant committee actually didn't support his motion nine to four, which I think says a lot. Select board uh, did support it two to one. Mark Kalilo was the only one that was against it because as, as a lot of us know from the previous reports, Mark Palillo was, was against, he wants to wait on the fuel tank project. He just wants to take another look at it and, and see maybe it can be done with smaller tanks. Maybe there's just a, a different way to do it because he would really like to see the town work toward its goal for more electric vehicles. Uh, yes, yes, but that I think is not that, uh, that takes time to change all the exactly. vehicle, electrical vehicle. It was yeah. part of the uh, discussion the night before. Um, right. So moving to the next story, um, we have 12 retri retirees at the Belmont Public Schools this year. So yes. we talked a lot about Jim Davis, um, uh, who yes. is the athletic director, but there is so other uh, known figures. What's worth noting is, um, so they were honored on June 8th, all 12 re you know, retirees. And some of them have been with the town for more than 20 years, like um, Hester Murray, she worked as a special education teacher at the Winbrook. She's retiring. Heather Blake, a Burbank elementary nurse, was another longtime employee, 23 years. Kathy Grant was a superintendent's administrative assistant, a little over 20 years. And another administrative assistant that's about 22 years is, is Cynthia Femino. A lot of people might know her because she's, she's someone in the Belmont High School office, one of those people that you can always ask a question of. I know that the principal relied very heavily on her as well. And um, Alice Melnikov, the community service coordinator for Belmont High School, who's not being replaced, she, she's retiring after a little more than 20 years. So I think, you know, it's these people were with the town for a long time. It says a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's nice yeah. that they were honored. I'll, I'll be um, publishing, you know, all their, their photos and the, and the tributes. Uh, Wicked local. In so the, on the Wicked local. Okay, great. Yeah. So no more on Wicked local Belmont? <laughs> yes. Term? Yes. And uh, speaking of long term employee and perfect transition for the next story is mm -hmm. Mike Santoro, assistant director of the DPW and highway superintendent, has 
40 years of service. He does. Can you believe that? And he said, oh boy, time really flew. <laughs> but he started out as a laborer with the public works department and he worked his way up to motor equipment operator, truck driver, special heavy equipment operator, working foreman. And then in 1989, he got his first management position as, an, as the assistant highway superintendent. Then he became the highway superintendent. And his most recent position is the assistant public works director. And they did honor him. Um, the town had a, like a, just a staff only event for him this past Monday, the, the 14th um, in the town hall auditorium where, you know, just honoring him for his 40 years of service. Yes, but he's not retiring yet. He told me he is not planning to retire. He'd like to put in at least another 10 years, but we'll see what he ends up doing. And he hopes that when in the 10, you know, if if in 10 years they're they're finally going to rebuild the public works facility, which which is our next story that we're going to talk about, he hopes to be on that building committee. So it's possible he will be. We'll see. We'll see. Yes, a long time resident and and, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and very important for Belmont. So next story is about the ribbon cutting at the DPW, at least. Yeah, that was, that was a really nice. This is our this is like the first live town event where you didn't have to wear a mask. Oh. You know, yeah. a lot of people and, and we didn't have to wear a mask and they cut the ribbon. It was a postponed ribbon cutting for the renovation of the public works facility because that was completed in February, but because of COVID, they couldn't have a big public event to celebrate it. So they had it on June 15th and the ribbon was actually cut by longtime employee, Michael Santoro himself. And then we all had an, a tour of the facility. So the project, it, it got off the ground in July of 2019. It was, it was completed in February and the final price tag, according to Anne Marie Mahoney, chairman of the building committee, it was about $2 million. And she did say, and she said this at the ribbon cutting, eight more years and we're gonna be talking about rebuilding this because it's a 10 year fix. She wanted to make clear that it's not a permanent fix, but it, it you know, they, they completely renovated the, the interior. Um, the ventilation is so much better. When you walk in there, you don't smell the fumes like you used to. And just the, the space is so much better. You know, there's an, a really good break room, lunch room, you know, a training room and locker and showering facilities, so much more improved. Yes. And and patio where they could like sit and even have a grill if they want a barbecue. So I think they did a good job. And, and one another, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but another important information about the DP, uh, DPW renovation is that it didn't cost more money to the resident, to the taxpayer, right? That's right. They were able to do it without a debt exclusion. They, yeah. they found the funds. <laughs> found, yeah. So that's so did. They had money that. from... Um, they were able to borrow, you know, borrow the money without, they still have to borrow the money, but the, but it's not hitting the taxpayers and they have money from like uh, money that the town got from a fire a long time ago was in this fund. They call it the Kendall Fund. So they, they're using some of that as well. And and they, you know, I'm sure they got a lot of donations off toward the, I know they got a lot of donations toward the police station project, which helped, but they're, they're planning a ribbon cutting for that in September. Okay. And, I did put together a video tour of the ribbon cutting. Uh, yes, I, I was about to say that. So thank you very much, Joanna. It was News Now. And as we sign off, uh, watch the video that Joanna did to have a special look of the new facility, or the renovated facility, I, would, I should say. So thank, thank you, you, Joanna. And this was News Now. Um, see you next time. Believe me, 40 years, I feel like you should have yeah. I think the improvements that the committee made were great. As I said, I feel like a kid at Christmas for this to happen. I do know, and I, I trust town meeting, and I trust what the building committee has said, this is a temporary fix. This building definitely needs to be replaced. Hopefully within 10 years, as everybody has committed to, that it will take place. If I'm here, great. If I'm not here, I hope that maybe I'll be put on the committee in 10 years to be on the building committee because it desperately needs to be replaced.
Right here we have the foreman's office. Our old foreman's office was uh, basically a closet next to this lunchroom. And now you can see we actually have room for a few desks and uh, a few tools, uh, television. So this is our lunchroom right there. Um, huge fridge, oven. Oh, the training room. We got all these tables, uh, chairs. We have meetings. Closets out here in the hall. See the laundry. Um, we use it more than you'd think. Just we, we do some pretty dirty jobs sometimes, so it's, uh, it's especially nice when you have really dirty clothes and you don't have to bring them back to your house and uh, mix them in with your family's clothes. So it's it's kind of nice just to get it done. Nice and clean, a lot better than uh, what we had before. Our old bathroom was uh, basically connected to the mechanic shop. So. I mean, you could just try to use the bathroom. You smell the fumes and everything else. And you can see these lockers are definitely a huge upgrade. All right, here we go. Yeah, so it's a nice and big. You can fit tons of stuff in there. Um, nice for a couple extra pairs of boots. I think there is, yeah, a couple plugs up here. Uh, if you need to charge a phone or anything. It's nice, sometimes we're here for so long, uh, you could be here for days, you, you need to have your phone on you as well. We spend a lot of time here, winter time, plowing, everything, um, the storms in the summertime, it's, it's not a 40 hour job, so we definitely uh, need the uh, upgrades.